And welcome back. And we're moving into our second conversation this morning here on Open Your Eyes, focusing on two new programs uh, coming out of Galen University. Of course, uh, Galen is situated in the west of Belize and has been, uh, has been functioning in Belize for quite some time. So they're excited to share their latest developments. And we have with us this morning, Dr. Sylvia Catus, who is the Dean of Business and Entrepreneurship at Galen University. We have Dr. Filiberto Pinedos, who is the Professor in Education and Anthropology at Galen University. And Dr. Cynthia Eve Aird, who is the Provost at Galen University. Good morning and welcome, and thank you for Good being morning. here. Good, Good morning, morning, Marlene. Thank you Thanks for, for having us. <laughs> it's been a while since we've gotten an update from Galen University, and we know that uh, as the years go by, you are ever evolving to be able to meet different demands of the country. So let's just start off with a general update as to how things have been going at Galen, uh, student populations, uh, continued interest, and well, we. We continue to maintain a, pop a student population of just about 500 students. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have our central campus in Central Farm where we have about 180 students. Mm -hmm. Most of our population are around the country and they take our programs online. Mm -hmm. This year, at the beginning of, of the, in September last year, actually this academic year, we began using the, um, so the platform Blackboard Collaborate for the delivery of our programs around the country online and that has been a tremendous success for us. Our students love it mm -hmm. and our uh, faculty love it as well. In September of interest for th this morning's meeting, mm -hmm. uh, we rolled out our revised uh, MBA program mm -hmm. that we, we spent quite a bit of time and, and um, in revamping that program. Mm -hmm. And in January, we were very pleased to hire Dr. Katus, mm -hmm. who I think most people in Belize know Dr. Katus and her long association with our, uh, the professional business community. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she's a veteran in higher education, mm -hmm. and she stepped into the role of being the Dean of the Faculty of Business and Entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and is doing some really wonderful work there. Yeah. We also, <coughs> um, finished the development of a master's in social sciences program mm -hmm. and that has been spearheaded largely by Dr. Panados and Ms. Sherry Gibbs, or the Dean of our Faculty of um, Arts and Science and we are going to be rolling that out in August. Mm -hmm. in, a, in about 10 days we are going to be graduating our new class of mm -hmm. students in all our programs, business, education, uh, the arts and sciences, anthropology. And so we're looking forward to that. So let's jump into the revised MBA program. So uh, you were telling me during the break that actually the MBA program has been ongoing for about 10 years yes, or since, so? Since yes. 2005. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially what has happened is you jumped in and revamped the entire curriculum. Why yeah. is that necessary at this point? Well, the thing is, as the demands of the business community changes, as the global environment changes, we need to continuously be training people that are able to respond mm -hmm. uh, to, to those uh, changes. Mm -hmm. What are some of the integral changes that have uh, been instituted in the revised program? In the revised program, we have a bit, no, it's a bit more technical. Mm -hmm. uh, we have added res a research component. Um, it had a research component before, but now we're expecting our students to do two semesters of research. Um, we also do a bit more strategic planning, mm -hmm. um, more hands-on projects as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, Dr. Katus, in terms of being able to get Belizeans qualified uh, in, in having or in entering the MBA programs. Obviously, higher education is not only great for your own personal development, but it is also important to contribute back to the society. Uh, what do you think the benefits are for someone who perhaps, for the most time, people who enter uh, a master's program has already had some work experience? Well, for example, our MBA program is a fully online program, oh. and it is geared towards individuals from any professional background who is interested in either developing or expanding their uh, professional impact. Mm -hmm. um, in, in addition to that, we have a very innovative um, curriculum mm -hmm. which 
allows the individual to almost immediately begin to make an impact in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with hands-on skills that they'll learn in the class? Precisely, through projects. The projects oftentimes come from the student's own workplace. Mm -hmm. We ask them to bring projects to the classroom mm -hmm. that they are already have in stream or they would like to bring on stream in their workplace. Mm -hmm. Now, what has been the experience so far since uh, the rollout in September? It's really been excellent. Mm -hmm. um, our admissions, um, our applications are up, I'm told. I haven't seen the numbers yet, yeah. so we're very excited about it. Um, we have a very strong cohort right now that started last year. We have a cohort of about 12. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to keep our cohort small, mm -hmm. 15, 20 at the most, mm -hmm. because we give a lot of individual attention. We do mentoring, online mentoring. Students can come to our campus or we go where they are. Uh, in addition to that, we find ourselves as well being professional coaches for our students. Mm -hmm. What would happen oftentimes, because of the relationships that our students develop with their professors, if the student has a problem in the workplace or they have to make a presentation they have to do a research they will call a professor and say listen could you coach me through this and this is a role that we find becoming more and more um, demanding demanded of us fantastic so it's almost like a mentorship program it's mentoring and coaching nice. we mentor throughout and then the coaching of course is periodic yeah now with the online program it really does allow for people from all over the country to access. Uh, yes. Have you found people, and I know there are satellite uh, set, uh, right. centers uh, set right. up as well. Um, what has been the demand outside of the Cayo area so far? Um, most of our students come from outside the Cayo district. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our reach is, our reach is, yes. our reach is national. And, and yeah. even, even with our program, our students who are on campus, we ask that they take some of their classes online because that's we are living in a in a world where we do a lot of work virtually. Yeah. You know, I I can stay home some days and work easily from my office at home and but keep in constant contact yeah. with folks at school. And so um, we want our students to become very comfortable working um, in the online environment. And so we ask them to take some of that's their classes. That's interesting. So even on site. Um, on-site students are required classes. to do online mm -hmm. courses. Yes, right. yes because uh, we, we must we, learn to we, we, yes. learn that way. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so sometimes it's a it, it's a jump for some students, but uh, mm -hmm. it works well. In in terms of the business administration <laughs> program, because of the online pro, um, classes, a lot of our students have been um, have have come to us after having been in the professional workplace for several years. So we have students who are graduating this year, mm -hmm. but who want to jump right in and do the MBA because mm -hmm. they, they, they feel that they are ready and they want that um, continued professional mm -hmm. development. Nice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, the new baby of the bunch. We have the uh, Masters mm -hmm. in Social Sciences. Dr. Pini, just give us the background on it. Okay, well, this is a Masters in Social Science yes. with the possibility of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, Perhaps, first of all, I want to say why it is that we are yeah. having a program in, in social science. But social science, I think, is one of the weakest disciplines in, in Belize. Um, well, first of all, there are not many master's degrees, but the social sciences are weak. We have a program maybe in social work at UB, but really, when you think about the social issues that we face as a country, it requires people trained in the social science that yeah. have a theoretical background to understand these issues and to generate creative solutions. Mm -hmm. And so we're responding to that. And so the, the Master's of Social Science is a program that's going to be about 42 credit hours mm -hmm. and it has a very strong foundation in social theory. Mm -hmm. So that you can think about Belize. I've always thought about the challenge of Belize is think Belize from Belize, right? Um, how do we address the, the issues that we're facing? How do we think about our future? How do we understand our history, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the kind of things that we want to tackle. So there's a strong theoretical uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a strong focus on Belize and the region. Mm -hmm. uh, so Belize and the global south, as it were so. And also a strong emphasis on in independent uh, study, independent scholarship, developing that. So you will see that it has an eight credit uh, thesis 
and also it, the master's program gives you an opportunity to concentrate in an area. So it's a, it's a master's in social science. Everybody does the foundation, which is, a, as I mm -hmm. said, those, those strong foundations. And then it provides the students with an opportunity to specialize in an area. Yeah. What are the areas study. open for concentration? Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're doing anthropology. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing history, mm -hmm. sociology, development studies. And we're doing political economy. And we're looking also at the possibility of uh, the social dimension to natural resource management. Mm -hmm. So there's like natural resource management, which often, when we think about environment, yeah. environmental management, thinking of what to do with the trees marine, and what's happening yeah. with the trees, what's happening with the marine life and so on. But often we forget about the human dimension. So social science offers a tremendous uh, breadth of tools yeah. and ways of thinking okay, to address the issues that um, affect the environment. Yeah. So that's one of the areas that we're looking at. We have to finalize that. Mm -hmm. And also uh, criminal justice. You know, uh, Criminal justice, Galen already has an undergrad program. Yeah. And so it, it's, I think it would be a great uh, service to provide to our students who are continuing Absolutely. to study. So those are the areas yeah. uh, of concentration. The program is going to be face to face, so it kind of changes a little bit dynamics okay. um, yeah. uh, from the online, or it's going to be a hybrid program, and those are, that's something again that we're trying to fine tune. And the reason why the face to face is that we do not only want to offer uh, students the possibility of obtaining a master's uh, in social science, we want to create a kind of network of social scientists, of people yeah. who are looking at the issues that Belize is facing and tackling them and creating a community as it were. Yeah. Um, so we feel that in the first instance we want to make sure that there's a face-to-face -face component. Mm -hmm. However, it's going to be, this face-to-face -face component is going to be concentrated in weekends because we know a lot of people who might want to take this program are people who are working already. So uh, we're looking at two modalities, again something that we're fine-tuning. One of them might be uh, for people to take three courses uh, during the weekend, so they're three-hour sessions. Uh, graduate studies often have like a seminar-style program, yeah. so maybe a course on Friday evening and two on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. But, okay, in the last discussion we've been having, because we've been thinking really creatively but about this. But this is being created, yeah. and that's, yeah. right. I think that's yeah. part of yeah. the beauty of being able to recognize the needs of the country and then formulate what will work best. Right, right? Exactly. exactly. So I, I hear you. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it's something that we're, we're constantly examining. So yeah. we're looking at the, the possibility we're considering right now of two hour seminars and one hour online okay. that allows then people to kind of come the weekend maybe for one day, do the courses mm -hmm. and then have a one hour seminar online. Yeah. So it's kind of a hybrid program and a lot of universities are doing that um, and, and it's proven to be quite successful. Okay. Yeah. Now, talk about what, what are the uh, programs that are established for undergrad for social sciences? Because those would be a precursor to get into mm -hmm. the social sciences master's right. program. Mm -hmm. Bachelor's in anthropology mm -hmm. and criminal justice. So okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are at Galen. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, in Belize. Uh, a and lot of environmental science too. Right. Yeah. right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but students who, for example, come from a social work background, mm -hmm. uh, teachers who have done kind of the social studies curriculum and they want to, you know, in increase their knowledge in the social sciences. Those and other areas, I think, history is another program that's also students can do here in Belize. So mm -hmm. they can, uh, you know, go into a social science uh, yeah. program. Now, Dr. Pinedas, with your, with your skills or your experience, I should say, working within different communities in Belize and different NGOs and INGOs, mm -hmm. what would you say is the greatest benefit of having uh, people who are already involved in, in uh, social work or uh, people who are interested in social work and having this kind of specialized degree? Okay. You know, I mean, the, the kind of challenges that we face, yeah. okay, no doubt need for lateral kinds of thinking, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, different ways of considering. And so what a social science uh, degree offers is a variety of paradigms from which to think about these problems, mm -hmm. okay? So for me, it is not only, even though it has a strong emphasis on theory, it's not necessarily that we're thinking all of these people are gonna become theoreticians in social science. Uh, but rather that What's gives the use them a of the knowledge so if we can't do something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. But we know that practice without theory, uh, it becomes repetition. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and so that's one of the things that I think this program really offers. 
the, the, the scope of different ways of thinking, of approaching problems, mm -hmm. approaching social issues, interpreting what's going on in Belize and generating solutions. To me, that's the greatest value. The other value is that it will have a strong focus on independent study and on research. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a person who's already working in some area, okay, um, let's say, for example, somebody working in one of the agencies in Belize that's tackling uh, HIV, uh, HIV yeah. right? Or violence, mm -hmm. okay, social violence. They can come into this program. They could develop, they, they could concentrate in that area. Mm -hmm. They could actually conduct research in that particular area that could be related to their workplace. Mm -hmm. And hopefully at the end, uh, not only is there additional knowledge, but it could be of direct value and could yeah. be implemented immediately some of the solutions that they you were placed. You may even come up with a tangible project exactly. to be able exactly. to execute. Yeah. Now, uh, Dr. Eric, tell us a bit about uh, the process that Galen undergoes when establishing new programs or revamping programs mm -hmm. as the MBA in terms of consultation. Do you speak with private sector? Do you speak with NGOs? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. We, um, the Faculty of um, for example, when we were doing the MBA program mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. fall, uh, Dr. Dean Hill, mm -hmm. Cliff Hill, was the Dean of the Faculty of Business at the time. And he cons uh, some of his faculty came together and they said, you know, these are the issues that we have with this program. It's, it's not strong enough in the research. Uh, in that program, students did a capstone mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. The times had changed and we wanted um, people to be, be able to do more analysis day, day of data, etc. So they sat and they looked at the strengths and the weaknesses of the program. They came to me, they proposed, we need to review this program for these reasons. Um, and we would like to revamp the program. And so they went away, they could talk to, to other faculty members. A lot of our faculty members, the people that we use in our programs business, are in the community business system. practitioners, they are in the community. So mm -hmm. it's almost as though we have yeah. a, a captive mm -hmm. group that is working. And so there's a lot of consultation. Mm -hmm that goes into the, um, into the revising of the program, into reviewing it, evaluating it, revamping it. And then it comes back to what I call the Provost Council and the pro program is presented and a recommendation is made as to whether this program is allowed to continue or not. Mm -hmm. um, and the, similarly, we had um, the same thing happen with the social um, mm -hmm. science program. We had faculty like Dr. Penadas who work with us at the undergraduate level and they came and said, you know, it's time for us to do a master's in social science. These are the reasons mm -hmm. why we ought to do this, and this is what we think the program should look like. Yeah. Interestingly, both programs, and I think without consulting with each other, yeah. actually felt that the students needed to do a lot more research. They needed to be better scholars mm -hmm. that will gather data, and analyze data, mm -hmm. and make informed decisions based on what they're finding. Yeah. So. In addition to that, we are also not only when we're revamping the program, but we do do periodic check to get mm -hmm. feedback from right. the business sector. Uh, we <coughs> do, sometimes we would run a new syllabus by a particular uh, business organization. Um, and in fact, uh, we're coming on our first year of this program and we will be seeking some feedback as well, yeah. not only from our students, but from the people who have been uh, lecturing in it as well. Okay. I just wanted to add as well that I mean we not only cons consult with people in Belize. I mean we have colleagues uh, elsewhere. So colleagues. for example, when we were developing the social science uh, program, we invited some colleagues from from mm -hmm. Canada and the US to comment. And uh, there was one very interesting feedback that we got. I said, okay, you know, this is great, but we're seeing not enough of the Caribbean in the program. Mm -hmm. I think we need to bring in some of the scholars from the Caribbean, you know, into, into your program. And I thought, definitely, you know, yeah. we, we, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And we hadn't thought about that. So we do consult with colleagues as well yeah. elsewhere to look at our syllabus. I mean, they're working in those kind of programs. And, yeah. so, and that's what makes it uh, strong. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to talk about the fact that we still do, not as much as before, have a bit of a barrier where people feel that seeking higher education in Belize is perhaps not of the same standard as seeking higher education outside of the country. Um, how do you try, or, or what would you say to people who feel that if I get an online degree from some unknown university, it'll be better off than, than going to Galen where I can have face-to-face -face and part of the online component? Well, well I'll tell you, mm -hmm. in our um, MBA program, we have a cadre of international um, 
scholars that we deal with, mm -hmm. um, we have one of the things we do is we seek out Belizeans who have doctorates mm -hmm. who are teaching in universities abroad. That's mm -hmm. one thing to ha always have that relevance. Yeah. But we have people from all over the world yeah. that from time to time teach in our program. Yeah. So, and one of the things that we do say to people because we do have we do have some institutions, if, if you go on Facebook, for example, you may find advertisements um, for institutions that are located in other parts of the world on advertising MBAs for Belize, and they cost a fraction of what ours would cost. Mm -hmm. But we say to the students, uh, they are one among hundreds of students in an online class. Mm -hmm. With our MBA, as Dr. Katusa has said, um, and with the social science uh, master's degree to the, the cohort would be very small mm -hmm. and while the, um, the MBA is online some of the professors will require a face-to-face mm -hmm. -face component on a Saturday morning for example mm -hmm. at our campus in Belmopan where they can dialogue with students and work on a particular project or have a particular discussion on something key. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Pedadas has talked about the necessity of the social science program being a face-to-face -face program the, the, the cohorts are small, it allows for gr much greater interaction, for a much richer yeah. um, discussion and networking amongst, with the students networking amongst themselves, discussing things that are common and peculiar to our, our yeah. environment here. Yeah. And with our professors who for the most part are all, they, they know this Malaysian environment and even though we may have somebody who will teach from Indiana, Mm -hmm. That person has lived and worked in Belize and is aware of some of the issues and the problems that are here mm -hmm. um, and that, that affect the business community mm -hmm. or the, um, in Belize. So that's, that's what we say to them. Maybe a couple of things. One of oh. them is that, I mean, of course you could do an online program as well, mm -hmm. okay? But I think that if you do a program <laughs> like the Social Science in, in Belize, the, in terms of quality, I mean, you'll be, a lot of the professors that are teaching there are people who have been trained overseas. Well, of course, they've been trained overseas because there's no graduate programs here. Yeah. Um, some of them teach already, you know, uh, part-time as adjunct in uh, universities mm -hmm. overseas, but they are committed to Belize, and so they're here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they are pa they have a passion, and they they have the intellectual curiosity and the commitment to addressing issues in Belize. Mm -hmm. That I think you won't get okay. elsewhere. Yeah. These programs are responsive. I mean, they're developed out of need, you know, like right. I felt need to say, you know what we need here? We need to address this issue, so let's develop a program. Yeah. Uh, you will have access to other students from Belize who are interested in those kinds of issues. And I think not only as a person, this can, can, professionally can that contribute something, but I think for the country itself to have a group of people who are talking among themselves uh, about the kinds of issues, trying to generate solutions. I mean, that's invaluable, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and with the MBA program, we're developing a community of professionals in the business sector in particular who are able to work with each other, support each other, mm -hmm. and I think that is something that was, would be lost mm -hmm. if you do an overseas program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about affordability. What are the costs associated with these two master's programs? And how long will the program run for? The MBA program is about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, we do two courses per semester, and they're not done; con they're done uh, consecutively. So you're only working on one, one course at a time. The courses are about seven weeks mm -hmm. each. Um, we have about twelve courses yeah. in the program. Uh, each course is three credit hours, so we have thirty-six credit hours. Um, it's $750 per credit hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel it's an excellent investment in mm -hmm. professional development. And what you get out of the program and what we expect that your, your net work sh worth should go up mm -hmm. and so easily cover the cost of that program. Another thing that also happens is that some employers uh, offer it as a benefit to their employees. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, we try to make it even more affordable because we have the Gale and Eagle loan mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. that students can access. Mm. I guess we'll get to that, but Dr. <laughs> Pinera? <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, in terms of the, the, the rates, they're the same. Okay. Um, and affordability. If you notice, we are designing this program for students who are people who are already working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we understand that. I mean, you cannot give up your job and go to study. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the big elements of this program, that we allow people to work 
and study. And mm -hmm. I think that increases the affordability of, yeah. of it. Um, and in terms of, yeah, I mean, the return of an investment, because it is an investment. Yeah. I think there's no doubt that there's a return on investment, both uh, financially to yourself, yeah. but I think mm -hmm. uh, professionally and, and to the larger society, I think there's a lot that come out of it. No doubt. Now, just allow me here, mm. because we understand with the MBA, where especially in the business sector, mm. uh, higher, a higher degree is often incentivized. Mm. Uh, in the social sector, not always. In fact, there are many people who mm -hmm. are currently working, have years of experience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and perhaps don't have the qualifications. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to them about the benefits of getting into a master's program? Well, I don't know what, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I think. The social sciences, I think, uh, if, if you think about the U.S. context, I yeah. mean, certainly I think um, we know that the humanities and the social sciences, they don't pay you as much. I haven't become a millionaire yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still have hope. Um, <laughs> but, but I think mm. that in, in Belize, I mean, the opportunities... No, I mean that mm -hmm. people are already, years of experience allows you to be able to move up within oh, okay, the social gosh, I, sector. I, 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 right, no, so, not, not right. the incentive part. Right, okay, right. I've never okay. advocated to people like that. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. All right, okay, all right. Sorry no, for that. No, it's slavery, Sorry. but okay. yeah, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is to get additional skills, because while you have 10, 20 years of experience in Belize working with violence, working right. with mm -hmm. HIV, working with youths, Mm -hmm. um, and you are able to learn a lot, what will be the benefit of going and seeking a higher right. degree? I think we know the value of professional development. Yeah. I think, and often the people who are in the social sector, they're there because they have a passion for what they're mm -hmm. doing. Um, to me, not only will a social science program give you additional tools to address the issues that you're facing, mm -hmm. but I think it can re-energize you. I mean, there's nothing like going to uh, mm -hmm. back to school, to graduate studies. You hear people uh, talk about it. You go back to graduate school, you're intellectually stimulated, yeah. okay? You're, you're challenged mm -hmm. and you're hearing from other people. So you also get a network of people mm -hmm. to bounce ideas off. So I think it can only improve in what you can do for your organization, for the issues that you're concerned about. And build your arsenal. Yeah, I exactly. Think, I think too, um, and this might just be my personal, Mm -hmm. pet peeve that sometimes we Belizeans seek answers to our own problems from the out, from those outside. I think that this social science program will allow us will allow the student who the students who go through the program mm -hmm. to find and to study the problems to find solutions to our own problems so we could begin to rely on ourselves more as a people for finding solutions to problems that plague us as a region. We understand ourselves much better. Absolutely. And uh, lastly, let's talk about the Galen Loan Program, Eagle Loan Program, we or are, just it's, financing it's, opportunities. Let, let's well, go that I'll, I'll say that we are in the process. We are in okay. the process of creating an Eagle Loan Program. Um, we understand that education is expensive, and we understand that too often when you go to some of the lending agencies, you have to collateralize your house and lot and, um, you know, Dr. Panadas is going to have a son coming to Galen in a short while. He might not be able to afford Galen because his house is still owned by the bank. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah. but you know, <laughs> yeah, because he's, he, has, he hasn't become a millionaire yet. Yeah. Um, so what we're, we're trying to, to create a solution for our students by accessing some funds that we might be able to, um, that we, we, we hope to be able to lend students at a yeah. reasonable, um, but as, as, as I said, that we are in the process of yeah. doing that. But what we do with our students, we do develop a, a good working relationship with DFC and the credit unions mm -hmm. um, and some of the banks that, that fund, help to fund our students' education and we interact with them um, and, and try to make that process yeah. as smooth as possible for students so that their payments come in on time and, and so on. So. Okay. In addition to that, students are able to pay on terms as yes. well. Yes, we mm -hmm. have a payment plan and we mm -hmm. work with students on payment plans. So too. don't start thinking about how much money you'll need for your whole program. Exactly. Just contact, apply, and then see what Ex can happen. Exactly. Afterwards, right? Exactly. Yes. 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 
-hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So the application period for the new master's program, for the revised and the mm -hmm. new master's for program? The, for the MBA, it's well, May 31st. Okay. Um, our prospective applicants mm -hmm. can go online at galen.edu.bz and access, the, download the application. Uh, it's a PDF, fillable PDF. Okay. So they can fill it right online, but then they have to copy and then send to us along with other documents. Mm -hmm. It's all clearly um, stated there on their site. Yeah. Same, uh, it's, it's same application same, period. Yes, yeah. same. Yes. All right, and the website is? www.galen.edu.bc. All right, well, thank you for stopping in and uh, letting us know of the latest developments. We appreciate it and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thanks for having us. We're going to go ahead now and take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about uh, the latest cancer song for cancer awareness. So stay tuned.